Hi guys, uh, this is our second live and our guest is here already. <laughs> I just want to check if Tutelupe can hear me. Okay, let me revise. Let's see how that goes. Hello. Perfect, I perfect. <laughs> how are you? Okay. I'm very good. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. And I know it's early morning for you, and welcome to everybody else who's joining us. Um, it's been a long day in South Africa. You're starting yours that side. So yeah. we have about 30 minutes, and I'm hoping we can get as much as we can out of you. I shared your profile a few days ago on Instagram, and everybody promised that they'll be... Oh, well, that's better. Um, that they're going to just join in. And I know right now it's essentially peak time in, in South Africa, so people are stuck in traffic going back home. But... The nicest thing is with stuff like this, you can always go back and watch it later. So, Titilupe, thank you so much. And it's good to see you <laughs> after see a very you long too. time. Yeah. yeah and um, I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I know we're going to just address a few things, but I must commend and just send kudos to you for all the work you've been doing. We're always thank watching you. and always being inspired uh, and just feeling a, 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 a sincere immense of, of pride an inspiration from I think a lot of us so please Thank keep you. going yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> I think for me I, I really don't want to be the one who you know kind of imposes and I know you from many facets I first met you about seven eight years ago if I'm not mistaken you were launching one of your books in South Africa you shared in, incredible poetry I then later met you and attended one of your shows mm -hmm. Oh, your sound is, your sound is, oh, An amazing live performance. Is it back? Your sound oh, cut great. up for a second, but it's back. <laughs> ah, okay. Technology is something else I'm not used to. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll just keep, we'll keep carrying on. So, and here we are today. And I think this talk for me is quite important because I specifically wanted to do it just to give those who are joining us an idea. I needed us to share something about Africa during the month of May which is the last day. And I think you come in uh, quite beautifully to help us close it off. I mean, we know that we are Africans every day and that, you know, being African is an everyday thing. But in light of highlighting our essence, I'm happy we're talking to you today. And I think I want to just allow you some time a little bit um, to maybe just share a little bit about yourself. Not, I know that it's, it's always a difficult thing to say, but uh, yes. share one or, one or two of your passions <laughs> with us um, before we kick off with our first question yeah sure no problem uh my name is titi lokwe shonuga and i am a poet performer uh i've done some playwriting and some a bite size of acting as well um but my arts my predominant medium is poetry and performance mm -hmm. um yeah. spoken word was my entrance into poetry and so a big part of the work that I do is being able to translate that work from page work into like a, a call and response, a performance with the audience. For me, that's like a very key component of what I do. Um, right now, I'm the poet laureate of the city that I live in, Edmonton, um, yes. in Canada. And my job is to be a literary ambassador for the city, both locally and globally, um, to just share sort of the the goodwill message of poetry and how arts can be transformative, particularly in, in these really difficult times that we're living in. And yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I make, I tell stories. That's, that's the summary yeah. of what I do. I tell stories. Yeah. You're, you're a storyteller, an incredible one. I think a Thank global you. voice that's quite unique as well. And I think that's why it's so significant for us to hear from you and just feed from your well of wisdom today. Um, in light of this African month celebration, I particularly like the idea of, you being a poet laureate, um, we, I, I feel a black young woman living abroad, it is a big thing. It's also very significant, I think, for young black creatives and artists to see this. This should be part of a lived kind of history that they know of right now, not have to read about it like centuries later. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I should just maybe just kick it off from there and ask you to tell us about your creative work and your passion. To what extent has being a global African influenced your creative process or your creative approach to your work over all these years? Yeah. You know, you ask that question, I'm thinking about what does it mean to be a global African? But I think I understand.
and to be able to carry that one. I'm here. Um, <laughs> we'll just carry on. It's all good. I can, I can still see you kind of moving behind the scenes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a real privilege to do this work, but also to be able to do this work and do it on many stages globally while also living my life as an African in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm influenced by all the things that I pick up on my journey. I was born in, in Lagos, Nigeria. I lived in Nigeria till I was a teenager, till I was 13, moved here to Canada, um, moved back again to Nigeria. Um, and I have spent some time even living in South Africa and, and all of these little pieces of my story influence the work that are, I write. Um, but always I know who I'm speaking to Mm -hmm. and my compass is always turned toward home, you know, and the idea of telling our stories in all its complexity and in all the nuanced ways that Africans exist across the globe, um, Africans both on the continent and in, in diaspora. I think my work is just influenced by my life. If you were to sort of follow my creative journey, you could almost map it side to side with my womanhood journey. Because yeah. as I learn and grow and evolve, I put it back into my work. Um, and that's sort of how, like, my, I don't know how to separate the art that I make from the life that I'm living. It, it's, it's always for me like a pretty honest reflection of mm -hmm. my lived experience as mm -hmm. an African woman <laughs> on the globe. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not easy. I read somewhere a couple of, it, in fact, it's a common quote to say that with women, it's, a, it's like trying to fight two battles at once. I'm not sure how they really phrase it, but they say, first you're, a, you're well, you were a woman and then you're black, or you first you're black and then a woman, something like that. Right. Almost saying that our struggles are always beyond, before we face any other thing. We, there's these two significant caps, which yes. really <laughs> shouldn't be an issue, but they are, um, that we always have to, kind of feed into not that we have to but we forced to um, use a lens of how we live our lives through that that channel and I've seen you break down that that boundary even though you are so authentic to your gift um, and it's so so um, so so clear you know to to who you are you can a person can can sense your mood they can sense your joy they can sense and reflect back into their own lives through your words um, it has been incredible to see you balance the two caps um, that people often mess up with, but also being able to offer yourself so sincerely to the world. Um, I want to go back to one of my favorite countries. Nigeria is my favorite country. Um, I'm, amongst many others. <laughs> amongst many others. And, and I have lots of reasons why. I mean, I just think it's a very colorful, very loud. I think the people, I, I, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan. But I've always wanted to know what a, an experience of a Nigerian person is about the country itself, right? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. it's your country, and of course you yeah. love it, but what are your most favorite elements about your country? Oof. It's interesting, you know, all of the things that I love in, in one breath are also some of the things that will frustrate me in another, right? So, the unique nature of being a Nigerian is that we move through the world with great audacity. Um, when we are around, you know that we are there. Um, there's a sense of selfhood <laughs> that feels very Nigerian. Um, we are a very joyful people. Enjoyment is our birthright. We love to celebrate <laughs> And at the center of that celebration is music and food and arts and yeah. all the things. It just, there's a richness there. And we are spoiled, I think, for talent and, and resources and all of those things, which then in turn, on, on the flip side, um, makes, sorry, my baby's in the background, <laughs> also makes it difficult for us sometimes to navigate really difficult situations because... We are so very good at defaulting to our natural state, which is just joy and happiness and um, enjoyment. Um, yeah. So those are the things that I love most is our ability to reach for joy no matter what. Um, and it's also, also the thing that frustrates me the most at times. Yeah. 
as often as they would often say now enjoyment i hear this exactly. a lot <laughs> exactly yeah yeah it's been interesting i think i saw a comment from george uh, who says you know we we as nigerians move through the world with such audacity and i i really must say you do but i guess it's the sense of boldness and pride that we all admire many may not yeah. say it uh, but i think it's a sense of uh, of pride that's quite necessary uh, for anybody who loves their country to be able to live life and uh, be felt wherever you are you know i mean there's absolutely nothing wrong with that we certainly feed from the positive side of it because it's beautiful to watch yeah i now want to you know what there's a lot going on right i think as an african continent we uh, we have a lot of problems and and we know that we are used to our problems and sometimes we fight them and we protest against our own government and yeah we quite unique and you know we have quite a unique story to tell but i'm very interested to know what your perception about south africa is um but before even answering what your perception about south africa is i want to know first what you think about african unity do you think it's something feasible or is this i don't know is some fallacy are we dreaming here when we're talking about african unity that is to me like the ultimate dream right this girl is crying her head off <laughs> um, no, it's fine <laughs> um it's the ultimate dream for us to unite i think actually it's the ultimate fear of of the world for africans to finally tune into the fact that like once we are in sync once we are together once we are leveraging our our wisdom and our culture and our arts and our, all our all our resources then we are essentially unstoppable um is it feasible i hope so yeah. um when i don't know but i think there are trends toward Africans realize particularly as the world continues to evolve and show its face like as the world continues to show itself as inherently sort of unstable and difficult at times i think there is a reflection inward there's lots of mm-hmm. conversations in global african communities around how do we unite how do we how do we be more one um and that one is not monolithic like recognizing that we all come from different cultures and things but but being able to see like all the things that bind us as valuable and powerful is it impossible i don't think so but i think it'll take it's going to take some work it's going to take some some waking up and the the curse of that colonial project was robbing us of a sense of ourselves robbing mm-hmm. us of even trust in each other Uh, mm-hmm. trust in our voices and so it's going to take generations for that healing work to happen i think yeah mm. and and this is why the storytelling project is so important yeah. because I, i i believe that we come from stories and that our you know, our lived realities our voices really is not the only power but certainly one of the most powerful i think mm-hmm. forces we have that can change our economics uh even our way of thinking storytelling is at the heart of that so i think storytelling is by far probably the most critical uh, because it is in our languages it is um, shared done curated by our own for our people nobody has to imagine being african so they yeah. can write stories for us we is us writing stories for ourselves sharing our own poetry our own words i think that is really powerful right um So yes the perception about the might you say <laughs> and 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 this is a, I mean this is a perfect question for you you've lived here for some time also so you you would know how do you feel about us <laughs> about south africans okay that's a very good yeah. place for me to say that i need to pause for one quick sec i know this is unusual okay. a lot, but i need to grab my okay uh, no she's problem. not being no able problem. to be calmed i'll be right no back. Problem. so i'm going to pause my video for a second don't run away i'm still here no problem Thanks guys for sticking with us. I guess this is one of the beautiful um, things we get to enjoy when we're talking about women we we multitask and it's absolutely beautiful and absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just going through some of the comments. Also please let us know what you think, eh? It's okay guys just uh, give a, a view or a comment or something There's quite a lot of people in this thing also hmm. 
I'm back. <laughs> that was very quick. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, she's sitting yep, in front of me hear. now, so she will, <laughs> she will uh, join she us. Probably just, she probably just <laughs> wanted to be part of happened? this conversation. Yes. Girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, in 2011, I lived in Cape Town um, for a brief time. I was there for an artist residency mm-hmm. with Be Young. And I can simply say that even um, besides the work that I went to do there, like, which is just like to write poetry and create, I was writing a one woman play at the time in community with five other women, mostly South African and two of us from Canada. The work was great and beautiful, but what impacted me the most was location and the people. I'd never been to South Africa before. And I have to say what we had learned about South Africa from afar was very sort of Mandela centric. And that became sort of the brand. And we didn't, I didn't know much about its people in a real sense, their cultures, their way of being. And so that time was really an immersive experience for me. Um, Hi, (laughs) Taiji. Working working in that space and being able to experience South Africa for myself. I think South Africa is one of the most beautiful places on earth. And I think its people are brilliant and really special. Um, And I think like all, yeah, I think like all African countries, I definitely feel, feel this sense of like potential that's just at the surface and potential that has essentially been stolen from all of us in all the ways that we exist, you know, all the ways that we could be had we not been under the boots of these sort of like oppressive forces across the continent. And so it's bittersweet in that like it's bursting with, with vitality and beauty. But then I also know, imagine if we could bridge, imagine if we could bridge this gap, imagine if we as a continent could tap into what, what we have and mm-hmm. collaborate and connect in real tangible ways. And there's some of that, but I just think we're just all quite restricted in the ways that we understand ourselves and each other. But I guess in summary, my view of South Africa is that it, it's stunning, it's beautiful, the landscape, the people, um, the energy, mm. the spirit. That, ch- that, that trip changed my life. I went back to work mm. after that for two more years and then I had to quit my job <laughs> and become an artist full time because I yeah, tasted yeah. something while I was there that let me yeah. know that there was more. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, we, we certainly are a country that's overcame quite a lot. Um, challenges yeah. here and there, but you know, like any other country, we, we strive, I suppose, for that continuous you know, progressive sense of, we call it Ubuntu, in, in, uh, yeah. which is a Zulu word for, you know, for humanity, very common and global. I think you know the term very well. Or in, in Tswana says, Sutu that say Ubuntu, which means Ubuntu. There's the sense of, uh, yeah, I suppose that we really pride ourselves in. Yeah. Uh, it's not always a successful project, but it's a, a progress. We try. <laughs> we try. <laughs> we yeah. try. Um, so I want to chat quickly about the role of what, what creators do in Africa's story. I, I know how important it is for, well, creatives, in my view, are, like I said earlier, so critical to our development. But what do you think our role is, um, the role of poets, the role of writers, the role of creatives in the development and the progress of our continent collectively? Oof. I think we, 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 don't need, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of how important that work is. Just as important as like boots on the ground development work is the ways that we tell our stories. What rules the world today is a history that's written by people with their own specific agenda and their own specific narrative and story. So I often imagine if we as African storytellers and creatives who really are the Um, the archive of our time. We are the ones who document the ways that we lived and loved and 
died and mourned and all of the things. Mm. Um, I think it is crucial for African creators, African storytellers to be able to tell the story to be able to be the ones who archive this time in song and, and music and visual art and poetry mm. and all of that. Like we, as the, the work to become ourselves happens, I think in parallel and side by side must be the work of documenting and telling those stories as they were. You know, mm. history books are one thing, but even now when we want to know what happened in the world in a time where we were not, we go to songs and we go to the poetry of that time and we want to see the paintings. We go, you know, people flock to museums to look at things <laughs> simply yeah. because history books don't tell you everything. And often they don't tell you the truth of it all. Yeah. The ways that we are able to patch this story together is by being able to touch and feel all of these things that were in essence created by artists, by creatives. So I think, yeah, I think that that role is central to the work. And at least in, in parallel to, to the work of building our continent is, yeah, telling our stories and telling mm -hmm. it now and telling it in our languages and telling it in ways that are true for us so that nobody else can do that on our behalf. Yep, I absolutely love that. Unfiltered, eh? You've got to yeah. do that. We have no choice, yeah. We, I think that for me, having survived what Africa has survived and being a product of colonization or whatever, the least we can do for ourselves is be as real and as raw as we can. Yeah. Yeah. We possibly can about our stories um, because we are now at the driving seat of it, right? Nobody's telling them on our behalf. Um, and I love that boldness of us you know, really coming forth uh, quite boldly to do that. Because even when we started, uh, you know, kind of moving and making inroads into some sort of justice and freedom, we struggled with that because we still had people still telling our stories mm. in a way. And, and when we came forth with our stories, still we'd be, yeah, you know, it would be difficult because we'd be expected to tell them in a certain way. But I, I, I've seen uh, Africans really just... Uh, yeah, taking up the stage and, and just, you know, sharing and just doing what we can for, for yeah. ourselves and as honest yeah. as we can. Yeah. yeah. So and, and and even recognizing that like there are many different ways to tell that story. You know, like there yeah. right now, one of the things that is pleasing to my soul is the ways that um Nigerian music is like a global experience now. You know, everywhere yeah. you go, you're just you can be anywhere really and you'll hear a song by a Nigerian artist. To me, that's like yep. a very powerful conduit, right? And so if yeah. the music is the medium, then so be it. It's like if the music can get people dancing in a club somewhere, but also like, okay, I'm learning a little something here that I didn't know before. That too is like exactly. a very beautiful way to tell stories. Exactly. I mean, I have a playlist too myself, so trust me, I'm sorted. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So let's talk about dreams because um, we're about to, we're kind of nearing the end. Let's talk about, I have an African dream. Uh, a lot of people have African dreams. I'm keen to, I'm very interested to hear what your African dream is. Maybe not the ideal, but when you, you know, yeah, when you're in your element dreaming, what, what is it? I mean, you don't have to reveal your deeper secrets to us. <laughs> yeah. It's something I mean, you can leave us with. <laughs> it's not a complicated dream. Mm. It's just one in which we know who we are, we know who we were, um, that the story of our continent does not begin with slavery. It begins with us. And that is an invitation for Africans in Africa, Africans in diaspora, to claim that birthright, to claim that space, to claim each other and begin the probably arduous and painful work of rebuilding this time, you know, with each other together. My African dream is one in which the continent is as self-sufficient as we know that it could be. 
where all of our resources are used for good, <laughs> where we're able to move between countries and share knowledge and share art and share stories, share each other, where we, we are not pushed to the point where we're at, we're at now, where there's this global migration to other places. Mm -hmm. Ironically, many of the places that put us in the positions that we are now become safe haven and then push us back out again. My dream would be for us to be able to exist at home, at home, and for that to feel like a stable and welcoming and nourishing thing. Yeah, and for that cross-continental pollination to be happening, for us to recognize our, ourselves, to recognize our power, um, which I think is the greatest fear. <laughs> of the world imagine yep. that imagine yep. that we would be unstoppable you know yeah. that's a dream that like that's a dream that i i i have you know. the story of africa does not begin with colonization but with us that's powerful I, i've yeah. read what you just said um, i read some way you know, some time ago where somebody said if anything colonization was probably a disruption it doesn't really define us you know what yeah. i mean so I think that kind of awakening uh, yeah. really will help us a lot mentally. A disruption, just, that, a disruption that has echoed yeah. for generations still continues yeah. to echo, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I really want us to talk about your book, yes. books rather, because you, you have more than one book. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I really would want people to get your books, right? And really get to experience your essence, your power and your light. Um, where can people check them out and, and get them across the globe, perhaps, any ideas? So the book that's most re readily available is This Is How We Disappear. That's my 2019 yes. collection. Um, you can go to www.writebloodynorth.ca. And I would recommend that first uh, to support indie publishers. www.writebloodynorth.ca. Um, or on Amazon, which I would recommend last <laughs> for obvious reasons, yeah. but uh, it's the most accessible for some people. Um, depending on where you are, in Nigeria right now, we are stopped at a place called Roving Heights. Um, and so that's another, there on, on Instagram as well, another place to check out. It's difficult because my book is published by an indie publisher, it's a small publishing house. Mm -hmm. We don't mm -hmm. quite have the machinery to be as global as the book could be. And distribution, um, yeah. Yeah, the, that, those distribution networks, but those are just mm -hmm. some places that you can start from. Yeah. And I'm still like, wherever I am, I probably have a few books <laughs> with yeah. me. So if I happen to be performing in your city, I'm also a good place to, to, to get Yeah, so from. people must just buy your book. When you see an, a poet and a writer, guys, like it's not, it's not even for any debate. You should buy the books. Because chances yeah. are they've got stock and copies with them. So yeah. people might just buy the books. And, <laughs> yeah, you know. I hope that uh, also people were able to um, get uh, that link to the website. There's actually a question here before I close up with our last question. Sure. From, is it Dinan, 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 who says, um, how do we apply poetry to another art form? Example, mm. portrait um, for photography. I'm a big fan of your work. Ooh, thank you. Um, yeah, one of the things I'm really crazy about is um, artistic collaborations um, in music and visual arts. I think all of these things are possible. So the question is about how you can apply uh, poetry to photography. Mm. Um, I guess the first place to start is to collaborate with a photographer, you know, mm. um, if you're a poet or and if you are a photo photographer, collaborate with a poet. I think the ways that we learn how these art forms intersect is by being in communion or community with other artists and watching how they work, right? So the ways in which I've been able to learn how to collaborate with musicians is by spending time with musicians and listening yeah. to how they create work. And then suddenly there's an idea and I can bring something forth that we can make together. Um, so I think, yeah, even, even for art writers, when they ask me, oh, I have writer's block, what do I do? I often say just like, dip your hands into another art form. And so I guess that would be my suggestion here too, is just spending time with people who do things that are different from you 
and just sitting with them and seeing how they work, how they create. And inevitably, it will spark something in the ways that you create. And there's a natural um, conduit there for collaboration. So, yeah, yeah. spend time yeah. outside of your own art. I mean, you, yeah, you've done incredible work as well with collaborations with, I think, orchestra. You've done amazing work with the live bands. I mean, wow. I, I hope this actually some of this... Uh, um, if if those who are watching they keen to see some of your work with collaborations, those uh, instrumentalists and the bands and the orchestras can I think check it out on YouTube as well. The most amazing thing ever. I think it's pretty timeless, really. So please, Thank if you. it's on YouTube, just yeah check it out and get some ideas as well as how you can. So our very last question. Um, you know, I know a lot of young people watch this. They will see it at some point. And I always like to leave a message for young people because also in South Africa, the month of June is dedicated to Youth Month, taking back from the June 16 riots that happened in 1976 back in apartheid, uh, during the apartheid era. So I really would like you to speak to a young person who's a creative out there, but pretty stagnant and stuck, or maybe a little feeling small or, you know, feeling like, oh, I, I don't think this is for me, or I don't think I'm good enough. What do you have to say to someone like that? So I think there's like sort of this gift and curse of how connected we are, particularly in the online space. It gives you a window into everything that everyone is doing all the time, which can be quite intimidating and um, stifling when you're trying, just trying to emerge. Like when you're just trying to create something, being able to see all the things that everybody has ever created every day of their lives is, is, is just a lot of information. Um, and I say that because I'm, even as a person who's been doing this work for some time, every once in a while, I find myself in that like space as well, where I'm just like, there's just, I'm taking in too much. So I say, I start from that space and say, <laughs> even in all of that, you have to know that your voice is singular and important. Yeah. Just your voice alone cannot be duplicated by anybody else on this earth which means that whatever story you have to tell, however you have to tell it, is significant and important and will be for somebody else. You know, somebody else is literally waiting for you to tell that story that feels like, oh, it's been done before, or, oh, who really cares about small, intimate stories? That's all anybody cares about, you know? It doesn't have to be a grand project. It just has to be a small moment of truth-telling, a small moment of you saying, this is the gift that I have to offer to the world. And if my world right now is five people or 10 people or 50 people, 100 people, that also is valuable and valid. And in our little pockets in the world, we owe it to each other to tell these stories anyway. So push through the noise. There's a lot of it. Allow yourself to recognize that your story matters just as much as anybody else's. And even though, even if it feels like just a little drop of water in a very big ocean, that too, uh, can make a difference. That too is valuable and important. So push through. The only way. <laughs> the only well, way. The, girl, to get the girl's a speaker. <laughs> a big speaker today. Usually she's silent. So of course children are like something is happening. What do I do? Um, yeah. So I think especially now we need to hear from you and yeah. progress over perfection. The internet makes everything look perfect. Ignore that. Mm. The only way to get yeah. better is just by doing and doing repeatedly. So start and just keep going start and keep going doing and doing repeatedly I, I love that you touched on the fact of how the internet makes it all look perfect and we all know it is not and i think sometimes young people need that real truth because that is the reality and i think if we're not fair enough to share that truth with them then we're really not doing justice to them so yeah. thank you so much for sharing that and that girl over there, you know, she's not prepared to share you any further. So you're going to give her her time. I don't and even know what's going on thanks right now. to her. <laughs> please, you know, just thank her that she allowed us this time so she can have all her time again. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And, and we really hope that this thank was quite um, insightful for, for many people who joined. Um, I have no doubt we'll do it again soon. Yes. Uh, we can't promise, but we'll try. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, Titi Lope. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Take Same care. Here. We'll Have talk soon. Okay, right, then. Bye. bye.